Here's something I remembered early this morning. Okay. Okay. You done? You gonna move? All right. And Salem decided he does not want to be part of this any longer. You be part of mine? No. Okay. All right. Uh, first of all, I should say, uh, ignore the noise of the chairs or the room. We're in a new setup. Here's what I was thinking about this morning. What were you thinking about? This is our 50th episode. Our 50th episode. So I feel like we're going to let people down with the movie that we picked this week. Uh, we should have done something maybe more famously bad than this movie. Mm, yeah. That I don't know. I feel like it would have been more fun to watch than this movie. This yeah. one just kind of felt like a chore. Yeah. It did. It was. So let me introduce the podcast and the movie. Welcome to Bad Movie Date Night, the podcast where my wife and I talk about movies and dating, and we share our thoughts and opinions with you, the listeners. I am Nigel from AJourneyIntoFilm.com, and Caitlin is yawning. <laughs> so apparently my introduction is not interesting enough. Same as this movie. Yes. This week we are talking about A Christmas Prince, The Royal Wedding, the sequel to a Christmas Prince. A Caitlin, secret to... Wait, what? What are you saying? A sequel to The Royal Wedding. I just said that. No, this isn't a sequel to The Royal Wedding. We watched The Royal Wedding. But they do have a sequel. They do have a third sequel. Mm -hmm. A Royal Baby. Mm -hmm. The Royal Baby. I don't know. There's They use weird definitives. And honestly, I get this confused with all of the other Christmas movies with princes and babies and babies like let me just okay you start typing in christmas prince into imdb you get a christmas prince christmas with a prince a princess <laughs> for christmas a christmas prince the royal baby a christmas prince the royal wedding christmas with a prince becoming royal whoa the christmas project reunion and a prince for christmas that's crazy so let me I'm going to theorize real quick that if a Christmas movie exists, chances are it is not the first time this movie exists, nor will it be the last time. Here's my question. Do people, like, fantasize about being, like, getting... I know people fantasize about, like, getting engaged at Christmas, but do people fantasize about, like, becoming a prince at Christmas and like or meeting a prince or uh, yeah, maybe meeting a prince I don't know many I people who would never dream fantasized. about becoming a prince due to the segment of the population that would normally become said prince maybe wow. a princess either way either way I never put the two together well I never wanted to be a princess and I never thought Christmas would be the time of year where I could become a princess. Well, we also know that you were not a typical uh, child growing up. Well, I just feel like that should be most people. I feel like if your life was the story of Cinderella, instead of wanting to go to the ball, <laughs> you would want to stay home and keep cleaning. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> So, A Christmas Prince, The Royal Wedding. Caitlin, tell us what you thought of this movie. Well, I already told you, I don't like princess things. 
So to me, it was just kind of like this rich white girl is upset because her life isn't going perfect. Except I don't know if she was rich. Well, she was marrying into money, so she about to be rich. That's true. But she was like, I'm not going to let the royalty change me. Yeah, she's like, I'm not going to, I'm still going to wear my Converse. See, I'm just like a real person. I'm just like a real person. And, but overall, I didn't really get many Christmas vibes from this movie other than they showed scenes with snow and a few Christmas things. Like, it wasn't overall a very Christmassy feeling. No. They, this country, this fictional country of Altovia. Do you think it's a play on Genovia from The Princess Diaries? I'm sure that every single movie that has a fictional country is a play on that in some way. Because what what easier way to have white people in a fancy place than some like weird Eastern European country between right. Britain and Russia? Right. True. Where it's like... It's socially appropriate for us to have all these white people around and it's not a problem because it's not a problem that they don't have weird accents because this is the type the of hemisphere world. that we're in. Yeah, this is where we're at. We can't do British because I don't know why. I, I don't know why they can't. Is there like some weird law about fictionalized British royalty stories? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it would be a cop-out. Yeah, that's true. So they're like, we gotta get creative. Yeah, but you're right. There's not much Christmassy about this other than they say, we have a Christmas play. We need a Christmas tree. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Our country Flooding. is obsessed with Christmas. Except they're not, so. Yeah. I literally saw no one obsessed with Christmas. If they were indeed obsessed with Christmas, wouldn't they have still put on the play despite the strike? Uh, no, because you can't put on a play without workers. I know, that's what I'm saying. They Like, the workers would have stayed to put the play on because they were obsessed with Christmas. That's a good point. But also, I feel like a majority of theater is volunteer anyway. Like, what, uh... Well, they seemed very concerned. I think the janitors were paid, and the janitors were the ones that were like, we're out. And the sound people, but I feel like you could have easily yeah, found other sound people. Yeah. I was a little disappointed that this movie didn't go the sitcom route, where like the big finale was like, we have to save the Christmas play. I feel like there were a lot of different ways that this movie could have gone, and... I was still disappointed by where it ended up. Well, it also just felt like it kind of just... Everyone changed. The end. Yeah. Everything got back to normal. The end. But, like, they also accept... You know what's the weirdest part about this movie? Of everything that happened... At the end... Amber's like... I'm gonna have my wedding my way. And the queen's like... You're right. You should. I know, I didn't understand that at all. Even though there's that whole scene at the beginning where they're like, with the flamboyant Indian guy, Mm -hmm. where he's like, this is the wedding that you're going to have. And she's like, I don't like this. And everybody's like, it's tradition. I feel like the queen was there and didn't say anything. I think you're right. But also, sometimes the queen was there and sometimes she wasn't. And But that one lady was there. Yeah, Mrs. Stupid Face. Um, Mrs. Averill. I don't know. I guess her job was what, like? To keep people in line and say, this is protocol. Right. It's a weird word to be using a lot in relation to, like, a royal family. Yeah. Um, And she didn't really seem to have that much power or be that important, so I don't know why they didn't just fire her. Or why they had to listen to her. Yeah, I don't know. So that was weird. Um, yeah. So, like, 
Uh, here's something that you might find interesting. Netflix did not know that the first one was going to be as successful as it was. Which is why they greenlit the sequels. Okay. But it also inspired Netflix to launch a whole universe of Christmas-themed movies. And you can do a Google and find out that all of these... uh, You can find out that all of these movies interconnect in some way. What? All, all what movies? Uh, so, like, A Christmas Prince, uh, I think the other one, the one with Vanessa Hutchins, wow, Vanessa Hutchins, The Christmas, The Princess Switch. Oh. That one. Uh, they connect? That's weird. Yeah. There's, like, a whole, like, Netflix Christmas universe. That's interesting. I thought you meant that, like, the Christmas Prince allowed Netflix to make all Christmas movies, and I was like, oh, so we have a Christmas Prince to thank for making Klaus. Uh, no. Okay. So, for example, let's just scroll down here a little bit. Um, the Christmas Switch shows a scene where the characters are watching a Christmas prince and Christmas inheritance. And the Christmas calendar also has people watching a Christmas prince and Christmas inheritance. That's weird. And then they are... So, uh, sorry, I'm reading this while I'm, while I'm talking about it. Um... I guess the night before Christmas with Vanessa Vanessa Hutchins um, has some connections to it, and they there's like a giant ornament the ornament from the first Christmas Prince. I guess that shows up in that movie, and yeah, so like there's just like all this kind of stuff, and. Um, I guess in the Royal Baby, they're looking at a map and the country Belgravia is on it. The same country from the Princess Switch. Why did they need all of these connections? I really don't know. I don't know, know, but someone took a lot of time into doing that, so. Well, in another, some more research that I did... I guess at one point they just needed them to be watching something on TV, and they're like, "Oh, princess, we have the rights to this." Yeah, we can we can show this, and uh, here we are now, a couple years later, and they said it's all connected. Whoa! This is like some Dirk Gently level stuff right here. (laughs) That was a good show. I forget about that show. I I also forget about that show, and I need it to come back. I know. Even though it probably won't. Because everybody me tooed Max Landis. That sucks. Yes. But we're not here to get political. We're here to talk about bad movies. Okay. I thought that I was going to have more to say in preparation for this movie, but I really did not. I mean, it's a Netflix movie. What really are you going to say about it? Yeah. I mean, a majority of the actors are the same. They recast her dad for some reason. Uh, Did they? Yeah, I completely forgot about that. Uh, which makes sense why when Princess Emily sees him, she says, you look different than your pictures. And it's like, ha <laughs> Reference to the different actor. Because you know how they have to do that whenever they recast someone? Yeah. But I didn't, I didn't catch it, so. I didn't either. Mm-mm. And as I was watching it, I said, yeah, he seems like the same guy right. as the first one. <laughs> But then I looked up the actor who played him in the first one, and they look very different. Oh, well. (laughs) Clearly we played, paid good attention. You know, that might be one of the problems with watching these one year apart, just to make sure that we have enough content for this podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. So that being said, you can look forward to our take on The Royal Baby next year. (laughs) 
What if they take it off Netflix? There's no way that Netflix <laughs> is going to take one of their most lucrative Christmas movies off of Netflix. <laughs> this is one of the reasons that people subscribe to Netflix, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think you're smoking crack. I am not. <laughs> I am dead serious on this. So they got nothing better to do? They don't. They have nothing better to do. So let's talk about all the things, all of the rom-com cliches that this movie Are we going to talk about the plot of the movie? Yeah, we'll get there in a second. Okay. So, first of all, you have the flamboyant wedding planner. And not only that, they made him Indian. Mm-hmm. Well, they didn't make him Indian. No, they didn't make him. <laughs> uh, they cast an Indian person. Right. And normally... I like the flamboyant wedding planner type. I, you know, they're usually there for some kind of... Comic relief. Yeah, but he was just annoying. annoying. So annoying. Super annoying. Um, his nationality doesn't really have anything to do with it, no. other than I feel like, perhaps, that they were trying to go for two diversity points instead of the one. Right. Because it would have been too stereotypical to cast a flamboyant individual in the role. That's he, all I have to say about that. Yeah, he was he was quite annoying. Um, but you know who I wanted him to... I mean, I actually like this actor. And he would have done a better job. But you know who I kept wanting him to be? The guy from iZombie and Haunting of Bly Manor? N- no, but that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the guy from Deadpool. Oh, Dopender? Yeah. I don't know what that actor's name is in real life. I don't know, but he's funny. Yeah, he's very funny. I like him. I like him, too. He's Do you really remember funny. when he showed up as Jerry Seinfeld in that show yeah. I showed you? <laughs> that was funny. What is his name? I'm going to butcher this. Karan Sony? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably, probably wrong. Right. <laughs> that's probably... <laughs> I probably nailed that, actually. <laughs> He's very funny, though. I, yeah. I just wanted the wedding planner to be him. Yeah, that would have been funny. Uh, so then, okay, so that was that was one stereotype that we had. Mm-hmm. We also had the stereot- the cliche of she doesn't like the wedding that's being planned for her because mm-hmm. she's a simple New York girl mm-hmm. and she's not here for these fancy things. Right. Uh, the bad guy from the first one comes back. And mm-hmm. you think, uh oh, Simon, what you up to? But he turns out to be the good guy in the end. Yeah, that that felt unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. They like went overboard to make him feel like a menace menacing character. Well, so they show him the first Literally time he- <laughs> the definition of a menacing character is what they re- show him as initially. Yeah. He's when- all in like dark clothing with like the one piece of hair in front of his eye. And he's got that cap. And he yeah. like weasels his way yeah. through the crowd. And then the music's like, dun, dun, dun. It, it basically was. It was. It should have just had arrows pointing. This is the bad guy. Pay attention to him. Yeah. Well, I don't think they should have. I think they wanted you to have arrows that said this is the right. bad guy. I, so they basically should have. They probably should have just put in parentheses at the bottom like, he was the bad guy from the first one. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Might as well just have flashbacks. Yeah. Yeah, so we meet Simon. Um, again. I guess in a, grand, in a bigger spectrum sort of way, we had the simple New York gal clashes with royal life. Mm-hmm. And the whole, like, they want to do tradition. And she's like... Screw tradition. I'm not royalty or whatever, as you do, I guess. I just feel like what else didn't really help with this movie is, like, the prince was not very attractive. (laughs) I was waiting for you to bring that up. I just feel like that kind of... It kind of took away from the movie because I was like, I don't know why she's excited to marry him. Yeah, his they have no relationship, so it's not even like you're like, oh, he's such a nice guy. They don't have a relationship, and he's not attractive. So They probably share 
15 minutes of screen time top. I Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. So literally we're supposed to like this guy. But Why? you're supposed to remember how romantic he was from the first one. Okay, I didn't. And also he wasn't really that romantic in the first one. And also he's still not attractive. They this... should have just cast Simon as the prince. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we talked about this. Your opinion of attractive people <laughs> is concerning. Uh, based on how they usually play the bad guy. This movie would have benefited from a previously on at the beginning. Yeah. For people like us who yeah. who are not committed no. to the Christmas Prince mm-hmm. universe, but are obligated to watch it because of a podcast that they committed to over a year ago. All right, Netflix, here's here's my idea I'm pitching to you right now. Do a previously on for all of your Christmas movies. Is if, there going to be sequels? If your movie has a sequel, do a previously on. Please. Because here's the other thing. I forgot that the prince did that, like, I'm going to take your taxi thing, which meant yeah, that I when did too. the wedding planner did it in this one, it was I was like, okay, you're just making him look like a jerk. Right. But instead, the movie was trying to say, hey, remember when that happened the first time she came to our country? And I'm like, no. I don't. I don't I remember. I don't remember that movie. Should I have remembered that? <laughs> so the movie does start off with a bit of filling in the blanks because it takes place one year after the first one. The first one, as we remember, was named A Christmas Prince. Because he was coronated on Christmas, even though they got engaged on New Year's Eve. Right. In an empty New York street, which is the most believable part of that movie. <laughs> I don't even remember what you're talking about. I That's pretty much the only bit of the movie that I remember. Because, nope. like, I think in the first one there was a whole thing about how he was adopted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was a problem. Yeah, because he couldn't be prince. Which arguably, Simon is, isn't really the bad guy because he was just saying, look, he's adopted. He shouldn't be prince. I'm actual blood. I should be prince. Right. But I think he wanted it for wrong purposes. Well. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag justice for Simon. <laughs> so uh, we see flashes of Amber's life in the limelight because everybody knows that she's engaged to the Prince of Aldobia. And it's like a montage of magazine clippings. Yes. As you do, I guess why she is not with him for this year. I, I don't know. She needed a year to wrap up her affairs, which she did very little of. It seems Wow. it kind of, this is, I she, got the does impression. Does she even have a job? She just runs a she website. She was a blogger. Right. So and she, she gets couldn't paid do, to that do that from another country? Uh, I think she thought that she was going to. Oh, okay. Which that was like a whole thing. Uh, she, she does very little of addressing her affairs as evidenced by when she gets there. And the Mrs. Avril says, you can't be living your life like this anymore. And she says, well, I didn't know that. Who sh- you? Somebody should have told me. To which my first issue with this movie is that she basically shows up and has zero awareness of what type of life she's supposed to live now that she's going to be queen or right. whatever. So she should have lived there to be trained and to... Someone should have explained no. this. Right. She should have had probably bodyguards. Well, maybe they should have like spent more time dating so she would know. That's true. I don't seem... They they... literally... Okay, so they met. She was their... That girl's tutor, or whatever, teacher. They met, fell in love, and engaged, all within, like, three weeks' time. And then she doesn't see him for a year. Well, I think they, like, met up sometimes. That was, like, what they were talking about. Like, sometimes they were together, and sometimes they were not. But still, that's not enough time to know if like you want to be a princess for a country right 
she That's does a not big know. Responsibility. It's a huge responsibility, and she does not treat it as such. No. She just thinks, I kind of like this guy, which is how it feels. They don't even feel like they're in love. She's just like, I kind of like this guy. More so, his kid sister is pretty cool. She's fun. So She's probably my favorite part of both of these movies, and like when I think about it. Yeah. And so she's like, I guess I'll be a princess. Yeah. She just doesn't think through it at all. Yeah. Uh, so she gets to Aldovia with her dad, Rudy, because it is time for the wedding. Because this country is obsessed with Christmas, which means that the wedding has to take place on Christmas. Kaylin has her head on the table and she is shaking it side to side in disbelief. Yeah, because I just, I don't even get it. Richard is off being busy with some economic revitalization program. This was the most concerning part of the movie. (laughs) What? Where he's like, I'm going to spend all this money investing in roads and hospitals and doctors and schools. And it was like, so your country didn't have any of this before? Did you, you not were have any of this beforehand? <laughs> like what? You seem to be a fairly modern country, but <laughs> I guess they need to be more modern. He said, "I'm gonna put money into building roads and hospitals." I wouldn't know what state this country was in prior to this, right? <laughs> because they made it sound like. They did make it sound like this is the first time this country is going to have any of these yeah. modern day, arguably, necessities. <laughs> right. uh, but the problem is that people don't like the initiative because... They're losing their jobs and they're money. They're losing their jobs and the money is disappearing. Just vanishing. It's just vanishing into thin <laughs> air. They say, here's some money for roads... And then the people say, what money for roads? <laughs> and then their boss is like, we don't have any money for roads, so you're fired. That's literally exactly what happens, and I just not even like <laughs> <laughs> exaggerate. That's, that's exactly what happens, and it makes no sense. Yeah. So Amber's like, I can help with this. I have a history of journalism. And he goes, no, no, no. You need to focus on planning our wedding. To which, when she goes to the wedding planning meeting, she realizes that she has zero control over the planning of said wedding. And the dress that they make her wear is literally atrocious. 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 Jeez. Yeah, at that point, I would have just been like, okay, you guys just plan my wedding. I'm going to go do my journalism thing. But she can't because Mrs. Avril's like, don't do your blog. Right. We should have told you this a year ago before everything, but we didn't. And so now you're expected to follow all these rules at the drop of a hat. Right. Literally days before your wedding. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also, I feel like the wedding planning went very fast for being there, like, let's say a week before the wedding. It well, when like, you have that many people planning a wedding, it, it is going to go fast. I guess. And if you have people not taking any of your input and you don't right. have to make any decisions. Right. But then she ends up getting her wedding last minute. So, I don't know. Uh, yeah, where'd she get that dress? How'd they get her to fit in that dress? You're asking me. All the people in the country are on strike, so they don't have tailors to tailor the dress. These are valid questions. Yeah. They make it seem... They didn't think that through. Yeah. So, like, uh, okay. So the queen brings in Lord Leopold, who's this old guy who is friends with the king that died. Was he in the first one? Because I don't remember him. I don't think so. Okay. And... He was friends with the king that died, and he was part of the founding people of this initiative for roads and hospitals. And the queen says, figure out where our money's going. And he says, you know what? We're just going to have to let this keep going. 
it's going to get harder before it gets better. I'm not an economist, but that sounds legitimate. Yeah. When you're spending money on stuff. Right. But also, if you're trying to build new things... Where is the money to pay the people to build those new things? Because if you're making new things, people should not be losing jobs. They should be getting more jobs. Right. So. I know. I feel like there's plenty of red flags that Richard should have caught on to a lot sooner. Oh, yeah. Richard is a moron. Yeah. Uh, we And we know who's really running the show. Simon shows up. He does his little mustache twirl. Uh, but he says, I'm sorry, my wife left me because I did not become king. And they say, well, that sucks, but you can live with us. Even though people... He was married? Yeah, you remember he was married in the first one? Mm-mm. And they were kind of conspiring together to become king and new queen or something like that. I don't know. Amber gets mad that Richard is doing his job and running a country. Right. Uh, which I understand her frustration, but I also don't because he's like ruler of this nation now. Mm-hmm. And she's going to have to get used to that. Yes, but yeah, there's probably a lot of things they could have done better to prepare though, but whatever. Well, yeah, I mean, it all falls back on they did zero work to prepare her for any of this. They just said, you know what? It's a year later. Let's get married. And You're also right. Her you... dad does look very different. I, you were I, looking I had up. to look it up. <laughs> and he looks completely different. Right. That's crazy. I also vaguely remember him not being so stereotypically New Yorkerish yeah. in the first one. Right. He was kind of like a normal guy that owned a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And in this one, he's like, hey, I'm from New York. Right. I make a pizza. <laughs> There's like a whole subplot with the dad and the chef. That doesn't go anywhere. It does not. Literally the extent of it is, okay, you can make some of your American food at the wedding because nobody likes our Aldovian meat jelly. So the guy who plays Lord Leopold yeah. is not in the first one. That which, That's what you've been looking up this whole time? Yeah. Okay. So you're welcome. I'm glad you were letting me drive the boat and not helping me. And I'm sorry, I had to know. It's fine. I had to know. Um, we're almost done anyway. All right, I'm sorry. All right, I just had to know. Yeah. Right, Eventually, Amber and Richard go and they get a Christmas tree because that you know that's going to rally the country together during these trying times. Yeah, they kept saying that. Like, the country needs normalcy. They need to know it's still Christmas. Yeah. And because, you know, the royal family having... You know what this movie shows us? We put too much emphasis on our leaders determining what is and is not normal. Mm -hmm. Just because the prince doesn't put up a Christmas tree does not mean that Christmas is not happening. This is true. Just because the prince's initiative costs you your job does not mean that he's vindictively doing it. I think he doesn't even know about you. He probably doesn't. So why would he care about you, whether you have a job or you don't? But also, who... Okay, so we already talked about Emily's play being canceled. Uh, With another subplot of her liking some boy from the play. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of subplots. There's a lot of subplots that don't go anywhere. Emily's play is canceled. Um, They throw the play at at the castle, the kingdom, the mansion. What they didn't really the castle, the palace. Yeah, whatever. It's a castle. Okay, Uh, just because Amber wants Emily to hook up with this kid, basically, because it's their first kiss. Yeah. And that's more or less what happens. And then they make Christmas cookies in the kitchen. And the chef is mad about it. And that's pretty much the extent of that subplot. Mm-hmm. The, uh, okay. So then what happens next? Oh, so then the family 
receives a Christmas card from an individual saying, Hey, you, I lost my job and it's your fault. What king or queen or president actually reads Christmas cards that are sent to them? Personally the reads them. them. But also, who takes the time to write a Christmas card? Not right. just not just a letter. Right. A Christmas card. They actually only have Christmas cards in this country. Oh yeah, because everything revolves around Christmas. Right. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> he sends him a Christmas card mm-hmm. to say, "I lost my job. I'm mad at you." Mm-hmm. And Amber says, "That's a clue." She says, "You know what? I can't plan my wedding." My future husband's off doing his stuff. And she says, I'm going to do what I do best. And that's when her friends show up for the wedding. And they're like, bachelorette party. But she says, I got a bachelorette party. You're never going to (laughs) forget. We're going to go talk to some unemployed people. (laughs) So they go to the pub. And they meet up with the guy who wrote the Christmas card. Mm -hmm. Not to ask him, why did you send us a Christmas card to tell us you're unemployed? But to ask him why he is unemployed, and he explains that his company wasn't receiving any of the money that the government was giving them for roads. Then Simon shows up? Well, because they rec- the paparazzi show up and they recognize her. And Simon's like, I'm here to save the day. I'm on your side. Come with me out the back door. And they all hop in his car, and they're like, where's your nice car? And he's like, I told you, I lost everything after my wife left me. And you're like, huh. Sucks to suck. Yeah. Um, so then they do some uh, research. Also subplot between Simon and the princess's friend. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her friend. They are, like, into each other. And Amber's gay friend is into the wedding planner. Yeah, because subplot. he's the only other gay person there. Yeah. That... So he has to be into him. <laughs> Clearly, when you're the two... Only, Only gay, gay people, people in a movie, you have to be <laughs> gay together. So dumb. It was a little dumb. Uh, so they start doing research. Mm-hmm. And honestly, this is where I miss like 90s computer movies because hacking in 2020 is way less interesting than it was in like 1990 something or other. Was it hackers where it was like all the math things floating yeah, around? Yeah, it was like all the math things floating around <laughs> in the funny. inside of the computer were like towers of yeah. information. <laughs> that was funny. And they were literally like <laughs> <laughs> In this movie it's just Emily sitting a at a keyboard screen. like Yeah. Black screen, green writing. Yeah. Lots of clicking. And at one point someone says, What are you doing? And she this actually I kinda liked this because you don't often see Apple gesture controls in movies and she just swiped and she was on a different window. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And she was like, I'm just playing a video game and everybody's watching me. And you think, why would anybody watch you play a video game? But that's fine. And then she swipes back and she's like, we got to find out where this company is. And it all eventually leads back to Glockenspiel Consortium. And who owns Glockenspiel Consortium? Lord Leopold. What? Get out of here. He set up a shell company to set up these other companies to basically steal money and prevent it from going to the Aldovians. Why? For roads. Why? Because he was a rich... So it was going to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just like, I just want money. So I'm going to exploit the government to get money. Gotcha. Like, he had companies that were supposed to build roads, but the companies didn't really exist i see yeah and um amber says you know what i'm tired of this i want the wedding my way and the queen says you know what you're right you should have the wedding your way Mm -hmm. and uh end of movie the end that's i mean that's literally it no they get married well yeah they get married and then they all start doing the conga but Amber and Richard go outside to the courtyard to yeah, okay. have a moment for the first time in the whole movie while the conga comes out. Where they make a royal baby. Yes. I want them to do 
how funny would it be if they did things Game of Thrones style where they like pick them up and like take them to their bedroom and are like, you better consummate right now. We're all going to stand outside and wait. (laughs) (laughs) My gosh. Uh, Yeah. It was not a great movie just because I didn't like it. So (laughs) I was, I don't know. It was boring. I was fairly indifferent to this. Now I feel like I saw something about a curse in the Royal baby. I don't want to spoil anything for myself, but if the third one's about a curse, it's going to be stellar. It's going to be grade a stuff. Are they making a new one? I have not heard anything. Maybe COVID ruined it. I Mm. don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, this movie was uh, pretty boring. Mm hmm. I did not enjoy watching. And it didn't make me feel like Christmas, so. It did not contribute to the feeling of Christmas. It, I don't want to say it did the opposite. It was just kind of a movie where they were in a snowy place and they said the word Christmas a lot. Yeah. And then eventually I said, oh, I I guess this movie's about Christmas. And that's, I, you know, actually, I don't really have anything else that I want to say about this movie. This is kind of a short episode. Well, it was a short movie. It was a short movie. So let's talk about our bad movie date night ranking list. Um, I would kind of be okay with um, putting this right underneath The Christmas Prince. That's fine. We'll just put them all together eventually, I'm sure. They probably will be. <laughs> you know? Although I would watch it before I would watch over her dead body before this movie. I would also probably and watch my, future my fu- boyfriend. Okay, so let's put it underneath my future boyfriend. And Urban Legend. Bloody no, Mary. I would not. <laughs> I would. Urban Le- pretty much for me, Urban Legends Bloody Mary is kind of like my cutoff of I don't want to watch this ever again. That's fine. I would I would watch Bloody Mary before this movie again, but we can put it before Bloody Mary. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Because I would definitely rewatch this before that. Hey, Nigel, will this couple last? Um, I feel like <laughs> Mrs. Avril's not going to give them any choice. <laughs> also, there's a sequel, so. Also, there's I'm a sequel. I'm going to say yes. I mean, and we all know that having a child keeps the relationship stronger <laughs> and you have no choice but to be together forever after that. That's true. So they're set for life. Yeah. So, um, that's that. I don't know what we're doing next week, but we're going to continue our month of Christmas movies, Christmas themed, bad movies. And, uh, you know, well, they're probably going to be another rom-com as you do. Um, or Santa Claus versus the Martians. Oh, we should try to find that. Mm hmm. I bet we could find that somewhere. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. We should watch that today. Okay. We're going to, you know what? We're going to go watch our bad movie for our next podcast. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Have a good Christmas.